Hey, I'm Joel with Power Stance Import Export. And if you came across this video through an eBay listing, thanks for watching. That's what these videos are for. But if you happen to stumble across the video through a random search or YouTube suggestion, and you have any questions about these vehicles, don't hesitate to give us a call at the number listed here or find us on Facebook, Instagram, or the YouTube channel at Power Stance Import Export. We are the largest supplier of Land Rover Defenders in Michigan and most of the Midwest. Uh, so if you've ever wanted to own a Land Rover Defender, give us a call, find us online, and uh, we are a licensed used car dealer right here in Oxford, Michigan. Hello and up for sale today we've got another first for Power Stance Import Export. This is our first Isuzu Trooper. It's a 1997 model in iron gray metallic. It comes with the 4JG2 3.1 liter intercooled turbocharged four-cylinder diesel. It also has the five-speed manual gearbox. Now this is originally from Spain so it is left-hand drive and virtually rust free. It did spend a couple years in the UK but it's now located here in Michigan and comes with a clean, clear Michigan title. So if you stick with me, I'll show you the inside, outside, underside, and we'll go for a test ride. So I am a uh, huge fan of anything four-cylinder turbo diesel, four by four, SUVs, pickups, whatever. And uh, this, uh, the Suzu Trooper was offered for sale in the States, but hardly any of them came with the five-speed manual and none of them came with the four-cylinder turbo diesel. So uh, anybody who buys this, um, I'm imagining they're going to use it as an off-road toy or a weekend toy or something like that. So just picture a, a snorkel, a legitimate snorkel, because anything with a gasoline motor can't really use a snorkel because they have spark plugs. But uh, maybe a straight-through exhaust so you can hear that sweet, sweet turbo whistle, a roof rack, maybe a, a tiny lift, and you're going to have yourself a sweet weekend toy. All right. Uh, Starting off here in the engine bay, a couple things to note. The fuel system does have a tiny air leak in it, so when you go to start it up in the morning, it requires a little bit extra cranking. So normally the culprit is this uh, fuel pump primer here. The O-rings go bad in it, and uh, that can be switched out to solve that problem. Uh, but after it starts up first in the morning, the rest of the day it, it just starts up fine without any extra cranking. But um, alternator, it is working, but it's not working in its full capacity. It's only putting out about 12 volts. It's located right there underneath the uh, air conditioning compressor. You can get to it from behind the front tire here. There it is. So it is enough to keep the battery topped off and the lights work and the wipers and radio all work, but it's just not putting out you know, 13 volts or putting out as much voltage as it should. So uh, also the air conditioning system is not working at the moment. I haven't diagnosed that. Usually it's an O-ring somewhere that has leaked and uh, needs to be replaced and recharged. But other than that, uh, mechanically, those are the only three problems I really know. The brakes work, clutch works, gearbox works, engine runs, um, high and low four wheel drive all work. Um, it's just a uh, couple things. So cosmetically, there's a couple blemishes in the vehicle, some sun fading, some clear coat failure. Uh, the bumper do, does have a couple scratches and nicks and dents in it. Well, it's a plastic bumper, so it's not dented, but there's a couple cracks here and there. Um, quarter panels have some sun fading damage as well. And uh, if you wanted to spruce this thing up quickly, it doesn't take too much because you can remove the hood, remove the quarter panels and the bumpers and paint them separately without having to tape off the whole vehicle. Uh, but the paint on the vertical surfaces are in pretty decent shape. Again, it's from Spain, so rocker panels, all great, no rust, no rust on the doors. We've got a brand new set of Cooper Discover All Terrains. Great shape, 16 inch steel wheels. So we'll take a look at the door jams and the uh, bottoms of the doors, all great shape, no rust. 
rocker panels, all great. On the uh, front seats here, no rips or tears, pretty decent shape. A couple cigarette burns here. Um, factory floor mats are gone, but the uh, carpet is pretty decent. Could just use a, a, a good shampooing. Uh, no cracks or any damage on the dashboard. Center console here, we've got some storage. We got cup holders, we got your fuel cap release, parking brake, mirror controls, aerial up and down. Normal driving mode is two wheel drive, rear drive, donut mode. You can switch to four high or four low and no need to get out and adjust the hubs because those are automatic. Five speed manual gearbox, AM FM CD player. There's your dash controls. We do have uh, adjustments on your headlights there. It's kind of a European spec thing. You can move your headlights up and down. Headliner's in great shape. We are missing the dome light cover. In the rear, we've got 60-40 split bench. Uh, they fold up for storage. And a little table there for lunchtime. Again, door jams, door sills, all in great shape. Wheel arches, all great. Tires, all great. Rear bumper has some damage as well. Uh, but again, plastic bumpers, they're not cracked or dented. They just need, just need some love. Um, in the back here, we've got the barn style, maybe a 70-30 split, give or take. So I was uh, too stupid to figure this out, but my buddy showed me. This is how you open this door right here. You just kind of pull on that. And both doors open up. Plenty of storage back there. Here's your rear bumper. Lights and signals are in the bumper. Full-size spare tire with matching rim. Again, paint and body work on the sides are, are pretty good. There's the inner wheel wells. Here's the passenger doors in the rear. All great. Driver's door. And here at the dashboard, driver's control center. We've got uh, 266,000 kilometers, which roughly equates to 159,000 miles, which is really nothing for a Japanese diesel. And uh, that speedo goes all the way up to 200. So this thing is a rocket. Um, we've also got dual horn buttons, which you know what that means, rapid fire. Okay. So let's get her started up. So she fires right up, no problemo. Idling nicely. Oil pressure gauge is working, fuel gauge is working. Temperature gauge works kind of, it only goes up about a quarter of the way, so it's not quite accurate, but it does work and the temperature stays where it should. There we are right at 12 volts. And we also have an idle adjustment here. You can turn the idle up. I don't know if we can see this. There we go. So on cold days, if you want to warm the vehicle up quicker, you can adjust the idle. You can also use that for your cruise control if you wanted to, but that's not very safe, so don't do that. Here is the engine running like a diesel. There's the oil cap. Nice clean oil, no smoke or blow by coming out of the head. There we go, struggling. And uh, no smoke coming out of the tailpipe, so she's running nice and clean. Okay, so here we are at the driver's side. Um, this front suspension is torsion bar suspension, uh, independent torsion bar. Um, and then there's the bottom of the motor. It looks like a little bit of a leak, but nothing is dripping. That's just long-term oil, uh, very small leak. There's the gearbox. There's the transmission transfer case. Everything looks pretty clean, pretty dry for the most part. There's the rear drive shaft, muffler, all in working condition. 
Here's a close look at the chassis. Um, again, a little bit, I mean, not a little bit, majority of it is covered in like the surface rust, but everything is super solid. There's no holes or repairs needed to the chassis. Um, just a little bit flaky. You know, all that is is just some rust proofing that's our factory paint that's coming off right there actually. And uh, the chassis, like most vehicles, of this age could use just a good scrubbing and a coating of chassis paint but other than that the chassis is super solid again no repairs needed to the chassis no holes anything like that okay and here at the rear of the vehicle we got rear disc brakes looks like we have a three link suspension the trailing arms and the pitman arm and then it does have a sway bar but it's up inside there um so that does help with uh cornering and stuff like that the rear axle looks nice and dry i don't see anything leaking out of the fill plug or the drain plug uh, there's a little bit of moisture on the axle there that's just for me washing the vehicle um, but the brakes are not leaking no fluids coming out of the uh, rear at all looks nice and solid under here there's some tow hooks fuel tank no leaking out of the fuel tank everything seems nice and functional and here we are at the passenger side there's a look at the rear axle no leaks out of the pinion seal universal uh uni universal joints look functional drives the drive shaft there's the muffler maybe a little rust on the muffler i don't hear any exhaust noise when it's driving though so muffler is in pretty decent shape um and there's the back side of the transfer case and again, the chassis rails, surface rust, a little flaky, but nothing too serious. And again, here's the bottom of the vehicle. This would normally be all rusted out if this was a Michigan vehicle or any other vehicle that sees snow and salt. But uh, pretty clean. All right, here's the front end. CV boots look good. I don't see any leaks anywhere. Um way bar and links look all right everything is in place i don't hear any like bumps or rattles coming out of the suspension when coming down the road you know it could be a little tired a little bit worn out but nothing imperative uh, that needs to be replaced right away steering uh, and a tie rod ends look all right and again there's the bottom of the motor pretty tidy just a little dirty that's all Okay, so as promised, let's go for a test ride. I'll show you the gear changes, the steering, acceleration, braking, and all that stuff. So, let's start her up. Fires right up, no problemo. I do notice that there's a little bit of slop in the gear shift uh, stick here. So, it, it does select each gear just fine. It goes into gear no problem, but it's just a little bit sloppy, so there could be a spring in there that could be replaced uh, just to tighten it up a little bit like this. All right, so um, first gear and second gear are kind of low range almost. Uh, so you get most of your acceleration out of third, fourth, fifth gear. So uh, we'll take it down this lovely Michigan dirt road here on a beautiful day. So there's first and second gear. 50 kilometers an hour here. So there's third gear and that's going to jump up to about 80 kilometers an hour. So that's 50. 55, still in fourth gear, and that's 60 miles an hour, 100 kilometers an hour, and there's fifth gear. So, uh, again, this is a dirt road. Some of the rattling that you're hearing is uh, coming 
that there's uh, no shaking in the steering wheel as we're braking, so the rotors are good. Um, a little bit of pulling to the left and right as we're stopping here because it is a, a dirt road with ruts and the alignment is off a little bit. So that's going to play a little bit on the steering wheel. So we'll pull a U-turn here, go through the gears one more time. So there's first gear. 